Parts Express, the number one source for audio, video, and speaker building components. Hi, my name is Mike Vandenbroek. I'm with Parts Express. Today we're in the speaker testing lab and we're talking about subwoofer plate amplifiers. We in the tech queue get many, many questions about plate amplifiers in terms of what they come with, how to connect them, and how to use their features. Let me start off by going over the 300-804, which is our Dayton Audio SA240 plate amplifier. Basically, this plate amplifier comes with a power cord, comes with mounting hardware. There are two options to connect it to your existing system. You can either use the LFE output, which I would recommend using a male to female Y adapter to split the single LFE output into the dual low level RCA input on this amplifier. Your other option, if you do not have an LFE output, is to use the speaker level outputs. So you would take the power output from your receiver and or amplifier, run it into the high level input left and right, and then take the high level output and run it to your main speakers. This allows the amplifier to pick off the signal and that's all it's doing. These are not powered outputs. This amplifier will not put power onto these outputs without any power from an additional amplifier. There would be a high pass that's passed along to your main speakers and that'll basically serve to reduce over excursion which extends the life of your speakers. The output of this amplifier, which causes a lot of questions, are these two wires right here. We have a red for the positive, a black for the negative. It doesn't really get any easier than that. I've had people try to hook these up to RCAs. I've had people try to put these together. Don't do that. Connect these to the speaker and you're done. On the front part, what we have is basically a frequency knob. This is your crossover setting. Start it out as high as possible and move it down till the subwoofer sounds natural within your system. The gain is for level matching and basically that determines how loud the speaker plays or how much gain the amplifier applies to the input signal. We have the low level input again that's going to be coming from your LFE output. For most receivers what I recommend is that you go into your menu setting and check your subwoofer level. If you have an auto EQ function i.e. Your, your receiver comes with a measurement microphone, make sure you go back in and look at that level because odds are it's set it way too low. Maximize that signal so the amplifier has as much signal to work with as possible. There's an auto on off function. Uh, basically the auto looks for a signal. When it sees a signal, turns the amplifier on. When the signal's been dead for a couple minutes, it shuts the amplifier off. Personally, I use just on off. Uh, that's going to cut down on my power over time, saving me a little bit of money. There's also a phase reverse switch. Uh, basically, if your subwoofer is at the front of the room near your other speakers, set it to normal. If it's at the back near your seating location, try the reverse setting. Whichever one sounds best, that's the one to go with. The main difference with this amplifier is no high level output or input. Basically, what we have is the analog left and right inputs and then the LFE direct input. By using the LFE direct input, you are bypassing this amplifier's built-in crossover. So basically, you're making this to, uh, to be a full-range amplifier. Not really full-range, 200 hertz on down is what it'll do, but you get the gist. What I recommend trying, and this is just from my own experience, feed all three signal inputs. Basically, take the LFE, feed it into this input, and then also, if, you're, if your receiver has the option to send so the subwoofer output to both the analog left and right plus the LFE output. Try all three. Personally, I found to get more output out of the amplifier and it's worked out better for me. Another thing that this amplifier has that this one does not is going to be an EQ function. This is a parametric EQ, so it's not a simple bass boost, you turn it on and off. You basically have a lot of adjustment that you have here. You have the frequency level from 18 hertz on over to 80 hertz. You have the EQ, Q setting, which is basically going to be how wide the boost is in terms of bandwidth, frequency bandwidth. Um, a lower Q setting is going to be a narrow boost. So let's say you select 25 hertz and you select the lowest Q possible of 0.1, you're going to get a single frequency boost. The amount of boost is controlled by the level. So if you want the widest boost, what I recommend is setting it to about 39 to 32 hertz putting the Q at about 0.5 or 1, play with those settings, and then try the different level settings. You can also use this to attenuate the settings if something sounds just too boomy. 
This is something there's no right or wrong setting. It's different for every room. Play with it. Again, check out these parts at partsexpress.com. Part number of this one is 300-804. Again, it's available in a base boost version for sealed subwoofers, 300-805. The new version of this, the 500 water is 300-807, and the 1000 water is 300-809. Again, my name is Mike, and thank you for choosing Parts Express. Over 15,000 products, free same-day shipping on most orders, 45-day no-hassle returns, and free tech support. PartsExpress.com, the number one source for audio, video, and speaker building components.